ですけど。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>
And I've put in a graph to show you that the probability of occurrence of the leopard is the most between 1,000 to 1,200 meters. So that suggests that leopards are using areas with high elevations. Interestingly, I put another map in there which says response of panthera tigris, basically the tiger, for the elevation. And you see it's a stark difference, a complete opposite. Tigers are using areas completely opposite to the leopard. They do not, like the probability of occurrence is around 200 meters. Now that supports natural history of these two big cats because leopards are known to avoid areas where tigers are. Then these are the results of my model habitat use of anthropogenic activities. The areas in red again are uh, the areas with the highest anthropogenic activity occurrence. And as you can see they are quite widespread and again my AUC values and the, uh, the sample sizes. Then what I did was I uh, overlaid the species distribution model and the human <coughs> use model together to create a map for wherever the areas of overlap them are the most to create a map which says uh, the risk of human wildlife conflict in the area. And the areas in red are the areas where conflict level can be the highest. So these, these maps can be used by the forest department and the authorities to effectively mitigate conflict and reduce the disturbance in such areas. My discussion, basically, as I said before, conflict with humans over livestock and crops in India are seriously undermining the conservation prospects of such large mammals like the Asian elephant and especially the tiger. Uh, also, there is increasing enroachment and disturbance levels in these protected areas and which are, well, contributing to regular incidents of human wildlife conflict. Then, continuous use of forest resources in site protected areas Presence of village inside protected areas are adding immense pressure on, on the forest department which is already understaffed and lacks quite a lot of funds. And that is why there is a, a need to develop you know, effective monitoring and enforcement strategies to mitigate such issues. So the results generated by my study are being processed into a detailed technical report for the Uttarakhand Forest Department. And uh, I'm planning a project to replicate the same model in the entire landscape. And I conclude by saying that habitat models, such as what I have done, should be increasingly used for conservation management and uh, and basically to mitigate human wildlife conflict of the megafauna in India. My acknowledgement is going to say that I thank Enrico and Joseph uh, for guiding me through the entire process, uh, the forest department staff, and my local supervisor Abhishek Harihar, who is in India right now. Thank you. Questions. Yes. Okay. 
scientific or historical records of the communities in that area doing lopping previously and therefore how much of an impact does it actually have on the fat forest over a period of time? Yes, um, this community, the Gujar, they've been lopping and grazing in the area for generations. Yeah, But this community's population has increased a lot since then. Uh, also, there is scientific evidence on the rehab, you know, there is a range uh, this, this range right here, the Chilla range, uh, the Gujars in that area have been rehabilitated by the forest department outside the national park and there is scientific evidence of a massive, uh, you know, increase in the number of herbivore populations and 
obviously increase of the tiger populations for the people not being there. So that obviously has helped <coughs> the tigers and the herbivores in the area. Does that answer your question? Thank <laughs> you. 